the biggest question is like, how do you keep going after falling so hard? And it's like, I think it's that goal. I think that's that step that you have, to, or that line that you have to cross to, it's when you realize like, this is what you want, you know, like I want this despite those injuries because I know they're gonna happen. I've had them happen before and I've only come back stronger and more addicted to it, you know? And it's, it's what, what's kept me riding, man, for the last 20 years, really, it's crazy. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy. Uh, Kevin Parata, you can start now. What do you want me to say? I mean, you What's were interviewing up? us. Um, yeah, what do you want to know? What do I want to know? Yeah, what do you want to know? I haven't seen you guys in a long time. How's uh, last year been and the year before? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where do like... I start? So, uh, 2020. I haven't seen you guys since probably Salt Lake last year. Really? No, I saw you last summer. X Games. Maybe you didn't see me, but I saw you. You saw me. Well, X a lot games. of people saw X him, Games. Right. X Games. Yeah, yeah, X Games. Yeah, probably yeah. last time I saw you, X Games then. How'd that yeah. go for you there at X Games? Good times, man. It was at my friend's house and uh, rode park and dirt. Ended up taking fourth in dirt and then winning park, which is incredible. It's crazy. So you got one got a gold medal and one no medals. Book okay. medal. <laughs> is fourth like is fourth like the the first technically the first loser at like an X Games? E I think so. I mean, because they say second place is like first loser, but I was always really stoked on second places. <laughs> I so, think podium is winning. Yeah. I think in general, I think being top three is is great. Yeah, fourth's so, tough because you're like, wait, should I be in third? Should I not be? But it's only yeah. tough if people like say you did like you should be above. Yeah, yeah. In a way, judge politics, but. I had a good time. Yeah, fourth was cool. You know, I'll take fourth any day. At an X Games, just being there is winning, so it's sick. Yeah. It's so sick. Danny, Danny's really good at getting second. <laughs> yeah, I have like 12 X Games medals or something, and I only have one gold one. That's crazy, And right? that was my first one. That was your first X Games yeah. you got gold. And it was like the coolest thing ever, because that was like the first time I really like met Tony Hawk as a professional. And he knew my name, and I was like, whoa, you're That's Tony. That's crazy. Like, I've been watching you skate forever. Yeah, he still knows your name. Yeah, he might have forgot my middle name. <laughs> Scott, Say my name. Daniel Say my Scott name. Cass. That's right. I remember it. Yeah. Born on September 18th, 1982. <laughs> my little brother's 18th. Is that right? September. No, it's the 21st. 82? Oh. 82. Fuck! God <laughs> damn it. You got the eight in there, you know what I mean? That's funny. Do you remember your wife's birthday? You just got married. Kevin yeah. Pratt's everybody. BMX legend in the house. <laughs> well, we I started. A, yeah, we started. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I remember my wife's birthday? Yeah. Yeah. Or middle name. Uh, we want the full birthday. Yeah. Full birthday. Fourth birthday. 28th of October, 1993. Dang. She's a Halloween baby. Wow. It's sick. All of her birthday parties always been Halloween. Yeah, I got married um, middle of October last year. A year late because we postponed because of COVID. I think everything got, got got postponed. I don't even think 2020 happened, but. Um, no, like Feb January, February 2020 definitely happened. <laughs> and then it stopped. But Yeah. Oh, good, man. It was great. Um, got married, man, to my best friend. I've known her forever. Long story short, mom and dad know my mom and dad from back in the day. Good old day homies. And it just, yeah, just everything just fell into place, man. It's sick. It's a dream. That's pretty cool. That's I saw it on the Instagram. Where was the wedding? The wedding was in San Carlos, Sonora. It's an hour away from where she lives, where my mom and dad are from, in Hermosillo, Sonora. It's this beautiful little beach town. Water's like 75 degrees. It's nice to go and you don't need a wetsuit. You know, there's cactus and the saguaros that surround the, the ocean, man. It's, it's pretty special, man. I think um, ecosystem down that way, the Sonoran Desert's beautiful. So more than happy to have our wedding down there. It was, it was great, you know. That's incredible. So Danny's got some questions. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. So he's like, <laughs> does he get married? Does he not get married? You know? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when you found the one? How do you <laughs> yeah, like, how do you know? Did your parents tell you it was the one because you guys knew each other for so long? No, no. I mean, it just came naturally. You know, I never, I always had a crush on her. You know, she was always super cool, very confident. Is she older than you? Uh, one year. That's oh, tight, though. That's really Yeah, cool. that's cool. And so it's super cool. She always supported me beforehand. You know, her, her dad actually owned a skate park in Mexico before I even started riding like BMX freestyle. So she, she always knew about the culture. I mean, I was very lucky to to not only be really good friends with her, but then just just have that moral support before dating and then dating even more, you know, and um, you just know, man, I think it's sometimes it, you know, life just just puts you on that path and it just happens, you know, and mm -hmm. 
supporting have, having someone to support you man daily in your best and, and in your worst days you know is is what it's about man and so when you know you know and um you knew i knew straight away yeah i feel like i would have known a little sooner if my girlfriend's dad owned a skate park but i mean <laughs> I don't have know. you done he some research you know what's he built uh <laughs> he's built a really cool river raft oh, that's all right he's that's like nice. a full Dope. river culture colorado style yep. so river culture yeah snowboard ski skates culture that same 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 thing i mean that's colorado culture right yeah you got to build a raft that's right you got to build a raft got to build a raft <laughs> uh so he you your father-in-law grew up skateboarding um more on the bmx line but he was always all about all, always about the culture you know he he made uh he was like doing like festivals like organizing music festivals and then started his like own screen printing shop and own boutique store and then just obviously with the music and the culture he was a big metalhead as well and that's why he knew my dad and then long story short they just all collided into this bmx and skate culture that wasn't that very big in in the city they grew up in so he tried bringing a skate park into the city that no one knew about you know and um it, di it didn't stay open too long just because the culture wasn't as big in the city but he was always so ahead of his time man so so it's just crazy, man. The whole culture that just falls into it with with music and lifestyle and how you dress and everything. So, but your dad was a your dad was a BMXer too, right? Yeah. So my dad grew up riding, probably eight years old, you know. And he raced. He raced, but because BMX wasn't as big in the eighties, especially in Mexico, it was more of a it was more freestyle. You know, they just built these tracks like in in random little like empty lots, you know, and it was more like dirt jumps. You know, it wasn't really a racetrack. And then I think he even. Did a few missions down south to Mexico City and in other major cities to try and race, but it was never that big in the 80s. So he just did it for fun, really, man. So all the photos that I have of him and all the archives, man, it's just a bunch of like thrasher style, like BMX photos from back in the day. It's super sick. That's sick. So wait, so your parents-in-law, your parents, parent-in-law, parents, yeah, parents -in parents in law, yeah. parents-in-law, in-laws, your in-laws. <laughs> in Is that what you just say? You say in-laws, right? Yeah. In-laws. So your in-laws and your parents knew each other. Yep. They grew up together? Same city. My mom literally lived like a few, maybe eight houses away from my wife's mom. So my mother-in-law, her, yeah. So my wife's mom probably lived on the same street, you know, and my mom's sister was a big metalhead as well. And she was best friends with my dad and that crew of dudes. And, and then obviously my wife's dad was in that same group of dudes and just homies, you know, they just all knew each other. How did you and it's all meet each other? like three or four years old no babies way. babies it's crazy mm -hmm. man like we like i said we've known each other for for life man and so to have that relationship not only with with her as a friend but then also know her parents from the beginning of time man, it's super cool so there's always been that confidence and that respect and and obviously that love you know so it's just been cool to to experience that whole thing with them as well you literally are best friends pretty much yeah that's wild I've never heard a story like that. It's pretty Have special, you? man. I mean, I've, <laughs> I, I've, I'm sure there is. I've seen some stories like that maybe on TV or, but never really like heard it. But also what I gathered out of that was it took them like almost 18 years to figure out. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you know know yeah, it was always so weird too. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just like an overnight thing. It didn't happen no, in two no. or three years. Yeah, like I, I didn't start you dating. Know? We didn't start dating yeah. until like 2013, you know, I was like, I was like 18. She was in college, like first semester of college. Uh -huh. That's when I was like, oh, dang it. She's in college now. Like sick. Like, oh, I've always had a crush on her. You know, like this is the time. Like I either have to tell her how I feel now or she's probably going to fall in love with someone else, you know? And yeah, I at least want to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, throw my shot and make, you know, at least tell her how I feel, man. And long story short, man, it's it, it, now we're here. We're married. It's crazy. That's wild. So, and you guys never hooked up as kids. No, never, never. Huh. <laughs> <What>? No, never. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I'm just getting some looks from around the room on that question there. <laughs> you guys weren't thinking it? <laughs> no. Let's um uh sorry, I was let's oh, so sorry. I, I had um, a weird dream last night. That's all I wanted to ask you guys about. Oh yeah, what Tell was us. the dream? I had a weird dream that like I made a movie with Kanye West on an iPhone. <laughs> is that like what is that saying anything? I don't know. I saw all these memes about Kanye skating and how everyone was hating on him. And they're like, wait, Kanye skateboarding? All right, never mind. But he's, like, been, he's I, off the I heard he was skating for a while now. Little but, Wayne skateboarding. Not from the footage I saw. It looked it's pretty probably recent. Just cru it anyone was, can get a board and cruise, though. You but know? he so did cruise across the skate park. That's considered what I skating. Yeah, he did. Up a bank. Like and recently? Then like, <laughs> and then like got off successfully. Oh, that's right. cool. That, is that skating? Yeah. 
That's yeah. skating for sure. Dropping in on any tranny and oh, crossing yeah. I mean, the park. That's like he's making an effort. But do you have cool. do you dream at all? Yeah, I dream all the time, man. It's crazy. Do you Sometimes remember your dreams? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they're super vivid and it's almost crazy. I wake up and I'm like, well, that was that was too real. Uh. Or I'm like still thinking of what I did the day before. And then right. I just dream about it. Or music and I or I go to bed listening to the same song in my head and I wake up to the same song in my head. It's crazy. Do you do you do you go to bed listening to music? No, no, not usually, but like I'll have a song in my head, you know? Right. I used to listen to music as a kid going to bed, and I used to listen to Stairway to Heaven, and I would go to sleep to it. Oh, that's a great song to sleep to. Now, is that weird, though? Like, No. Because no? you're sleeping I mean, and dreaming? It, you vibe to it, you know? Yeah, If, it, I guess if so. it keeps you at peace, you're not at ease, you know? Yeah. I used, when I was traveling a bunch, I would listen to uh, Pink Floyd, like Dark Side of the Moon album. But I would just keep the same album and I would literally go almost 48 hours listening. On repeat. To and I'd fall asleep, wake up and be like, oh, yeah, I love this song. Or you skip like, like five or six I'd be like songs. I'd walk through the back. airport and then like fall asleep again, wake up to a different song. And it was like, whoa. just on repeat. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So if anyone's, you know, has travel anxiety, that's but a good like, album. Yeah. What are you listening to? Like, what device? Is this tape, tape player? This was when they had, when you actually plugged <laughs> it into your phone. And oh, with like cables. A, yeah, cable cord. I've never seen those before. Yeah, this was early <laughs> iPhone. How old are you? 27? Yeah, 27 now. He's, he's still, you're young. Yeah. Young, you're young. You know No, old. I had a Walkman and stuff when I was you growing did? up. Yeah, I didn't even fit in my pocket. I just threw it in my backpack. I had the sickest Walkman. I had like a Sony one and I used to have these uh, Sony headphones, the same ones that Trevor Andrews used to use. Oh, just like these ones. Yeah, pretty much. And then I would snowboard in these. Oh, sick. Like this size. That's swaggy. There's no way I could do that now. Do you ever ride? Do you ride listening to music? Only when I'm by myself. I try not to zone anyone out. It's always like a, a vibe killer, is what I say. But if that's what you're into, then no, no worries. But I like I like having music on speaker and stuff. You know, it's sick. Yeah, a little bit of everything. No, nothing yeah. special. It depends on the mood. And are you a metal guy also? Yeah, everything. Nice. Yeah, my dad grew up. I, I mean, I grew up on Iron Maiden and Sabbath. You know, and my dad's like covered in like Maiden tattoos. And is he really? That's so Cool. He's, all, he's a huge metal fan. I think my first concert was like Anthrax and he Death Angels or something crazy. I was like seven. We've been trying to get Anthrax on here. They're monster guys. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, i actually seen that. Yeah. Scott Ian, he's always he's always repping. They said he'd come on, but where are you, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's sick though. But that was, that was one of my first concerts, you know? And as a kid, it's like, I remember those for the rest of my life. Those memories are sick. You do remember that for the rest of your life. And it kind of like, I feel like it kind of... It kind of sets the bar for like what you're gonna be like. My first concert was a Metallica concert, and like I feel like I'm still kind of, they're still kind of there. I mean, you look so. like you could be an offspring of James Hetfield for sure. <laughs> Just a little, you think? Maybe. You think I could be like his child? I don't know. I mean, he's definitely played in Australia around that could time. Be cousins. He's an angry, out the, He's an angry dude. Though. I'm not an angry guy. <laughs> really? I think he's a pretty angry dude. We ever watched the documentaries on them? Um, no, I haven't really watched the documentaries. He's either. like, he, he's like, he's like the metal guy that like got rich and famous and is like pissed about getting rich and famous. Really? Yeah. That's, that's what I take from it anyway. Yeah. Different story though. Well, I mean, Hey, you're like, you're making <laughs> this music. It's not like you're doing it just to be noticed by people. You're yeah. doing it to like let out some demons within your own. Right. Yeah. Mind that's a, you know, passion, you know, passion, you know? Yeah. I had made sick though. Do you still listen to Iron Maiden? Yeah, here and there. It's one of those like I have I know every single song that you they've do. ever made, you know, but I don't listen to them all the time. But like, you know what I liked about Iron Maiden back in the day with their graphics? Dude, the graphics are so sick Dude. and then their shows are insane. That's so what like I was their, gonna say. Their the shows. stages are insane. So like I would be more hyped to see like what stage they were gonna build or what crazy You see that jet? Dude, the jet's insane. The jet's and then sick. it's like the story behind <laughs> it all, like he, full on pilot, man, it's crazy. They fly their own plane around. Yeah, but my dad's a huge fan, and and same with you know it's it sells dad. She she he's like a full on like, like I said, they're full on metalheads, and they're all about like I think they're on tour right now, and he's all talking about like coming to, to San Diego to visit us and go into the concert and stuff. So, it's sick that it's still it's still happening. That I think that's why my dad moved to the states was because, he wanted to come to all the concerts. You know, what year did he move to America? Probably eighty nine. I'm eighty nine. It's my brother, older David. I mean, my other brother David. He's from 91, so just right before 91, you know? How many brothers do you have? I have three brothers. Older yep. brother, David, then there's me, then Victor, then Eddie. All born in America? Yeah, all born in Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. And then your wife was born in Mexico? Yeah, in Mexico. Yep. 
you competed for Mexico? Yeah, here and there. I think, especially now with the Olympics, there's you have the choice to represent um, either country. You're, you're, you know, I have dual citizenship, so I, I've always been very proud of my Mexican heritage as well. And then going to overseas events or, or in a, international events and not seeing one Mexican athlete out there, I thought it was super cool to, you know, slowly start bringing that 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 flag up up there, you know, or, or whatever it is. And, and just the fact that it can inspire other kids from Mexico to to make it eventually, you know. I think that's awesome. You know, I think we're seeing a lot more of that. We saw like within skateboarding with uh, Rehita winning or not winning, getting silver from Brazil. And, you know, you've seen a huge rise, I think, in extreme sports. Um, in Brazil. It, it, it's always kind of been there. But now I think even more so, like I've been on some conversations where people just strictly bring up her name. And it's and it and it's cool to see. And I think like being able to do that. Lizzie did the same thing with Finland. Finland, yeah. Finland, and I thought that was really cool. I think it's cool. Yeah, you're bringing up a country where you're from or where your family's from, and you're proud about it. And um, like you said, Raisa, she's she's from Brazil. She's what thirteen or fourteen? She's young. So she's super young. So not only is she opening up many doors for the sport in the country with with the country supporting it more and federations and all and building public skate parks but now there's girls skating even more and there's younger girls getting into it now so she's an inspiration to all these younger girls to to just fall into that next group of incredible athletes that will be around in the next few years so yeah. it's, it's super cool super important as well you've been competing bmx now since you were young young but have you noticed a change was there a change or a like what's your opinion on olympics and bmx I mean, I think it's great to there's there's so many outlets you can take with our sports. So it's, it's such a free sport where you can stick to core video parts or you can do high production video parts. You can do a bunch of stuff on social media. You can do YouTube channel, which is what you're into, you know, or whatever you're into. Then there's there's regular contests. There's, you know, magazines, photos, whatever you want to you, whatever you want to do. And with the Olympics, it opened that other side of competitions. You know, there's core competitions and there's these uh olympic federation contests you know where we're now it's not only going to be a more household name but now it's going to be more respected worldwide where i can go to a country and i can be not that i wasn't proud but it's like oh i ride a bmx and not everyone really knows what bmx is everywhere especially in like a small town or if a cop's like oh you're you're vandalizing you're vandalizing the street setup and it's like, well, I'm a, this is an Olympic sport now. This is this is my career. This is my profession. Like you can look it up. Like it's now, it's it's more official when it comes to like the regular eye. And I think that's that's given it like a boost as well. You know, and obviously now, I was lucky enough to have parents that supported my brothers and I doing what we loved. You know, thankfully because my dad rode. But I have so many friends that didn't have the support from their parents because they didn't think BMX was actually a sport they can make it in. You yeah. know, so. Now that it's an Olympic sport, it's not only respected in the world, but now parents can actually see a future in in the sport for their children, you know. And so that's also very important as well for the sport. Isn't that funny that though, that, that that is literally how people look at it though. It's like one year it's not in the Olympics, next year it's in the Olympics, and people or families or the way they, you know, it's like your typical dad being like, Oh, like your or family trying to say, Hey, you need to get a degree to go do this, this, and this and this, when you could go and not get a degree and yeah. do so many other things. Um, but just because of the staple of that, that, that's what it's been like. But I think like, especially for skateboarding and BMX, snowboarding's been in the Olympics now since- 1998. 98, that's crazy. Yeah, first year. And the first year you went to the Olympics is in 2002? Yep, 2002. And then with what happened with snowboarding at that time, Danny was a part of like an Olympic sweep where it was all Americans, one took the podium. Mm -hmm. Snowboarding, I don't even think was really looked at as 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 a real sport and then literally the next day it's on the front page of usa today danny ross and jj are these like olympic heroes american heroes and the next thing you know snowboarding's like oh let's and you notice from that 2002 to like 06 08 all these new families all these new people that came into yeah. the sport because it's now recognized as and it cha changed the sport forever and it's crazy to see how much it's growing now you know, even like watching the Summer Olympics last time, you didn't go, right? No, I didn't go. I was only like a few spots away from making it in. But it's crazy how, like you're saying, man, like 
all these new faces and these new kids that probably didn't even snowboard when you were winning and now that and then their families got behind them because this is what they wanted to do you know and and obviously it gave that that push you know and you can pick or choose if you want to ride the olympics or try to make it into the olympics nowadays which is pretty cool as well a lot, a lot of people were against it and a lot of people were 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 with it you know so i think it's cool that you can choose either so yeah yeah, no, it's cool to have it there because right now dirt's not in it, right? But no, just it's park, BMX Park. Just just BMX Park. Yeah. And I I know slowly BMX Street will evolve into it because skateboarding street is, but um, I mean just slowly and surely, you know. It's the evolution, right? So the next one's in Paris. Is there like a? Is there? Has there been anything? I know they do this all pre. Is BMX Street? available for in in paris or no no but i was looking at, i was watching a bunch of like propaganda like a bunch of like ads and there was a lot of street riding in them so i think it's whether it's marketing they may do a demo cool yeah so like if it's marketing and they're just trying to make it look cool and not like in a skate park then that's what they're doing but i i saw a lot of street footage in in the ads so i was it got kind of got me thinking like Will they have BMX Street in Paris? You know, Who knows? And we just that'd be had, amazing. We just had the Winter Olympics. Danny actually coached the silver medalist. Yeah, I got to coach for again, Team Dan Spain, which again, was really cool. Again, Danny's good That's at getting sick. silver medals. And, <laughs> well, it was really cool because um, the girl I coached was from Spain, from Catalonia, in Barcelona. And, How's your Spanish? Uh, uh, poquito, Test it out. Uh, mucho poquito. I don't know. Very you said small. a lot of little. A lot of little. <laughs> A lot of little, and uh, no, well, luckily cool, her English is is really good. But there's definitely times where we're on the phone, and I'm like, we are just not communicating right now. And uh, they speak Catalan too, which is completely different from yeah. Spanish. Like I don't understand it. Um, but it was really cool because she ended up getting a medal, and you know, obviously, there in Spain, they're really like race focused, you know, and yeah. thinking of like GS and these courses. But she's the only one to get a medal at the Olympics out of, you know, the of, 30 people that went. And I just got to watch her like go on this crazy media tour where it's like she's she on all these it, talk man. shows. She was on like 17 different like covers of, you know, every magazine. Damn. And she's like, yes, can you believe it? They top, they stopped talking about soccer for one week. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is incredible. That's so awesome. But well, she's you imagine like, though? Yeah. It's, and it's, now it's so cool because it's like, like you said, you know, the the sport's growing man and, and with growing. girls like her now more girls are going to get into it not that girls weren't into it but in bmx and skateboarding like there there's, there wasn't that really that many girls contests until just a few years ago yeah you know? it's crazy so, right are there many girl bmx's dude so many everywhere bro they're from all over the world like you're talking about spain there's this girl from spain you know that absolutely kills it. there's a few girls from out there actually like Dude, and street riding as well. Girls in South America, absolutely killing it, man. There's there's actually a jam at the Vans skate park today that's hosted by a bunch of girls from Vans, you know. And it's oh, that's cool. The scene's crazy, you know, and it's growing. And I have a cousin; she's riding. She's been probably been riding for three years. She just cruises a skate park, man, and she just gets to hang out with us like we did before before BMX. And now she gets to ride with us. She's it's like she's so inspired by all these other women empowering in action sports that w and and sports that weren't that big, you know, for women at least. That's awesome. That's, that's huge for the sport, man. And like you said, it's it's growing. And for her, like she said it well, man, they're not talking about soccer where s soccer is is a dominant sport in Spain. Same with Mexico and South America. Like right? it's either baseball or soccer. And and so you can find a soccer field in down every neighborhood, bro. But skate parks, it's probably like a handful in the whole country. How do you grow that in Mexico? So that's the goal, right? And so like the Olympics were never part of my career. It was never a goal of mine until they randomly added BMX into it. So it was like, damn. And it's not like, your real profession. You're not really a park. You I mean, do I, it, but it's I mean, like, I ride everything. Yeah, I've won park contests before and I've competed against the same dudes that rode the Olympics. Yeah. Which I was like, damn, it'd be sick to make it to the Olympics because why not? Because I've it, I've won against the same dudes that are gonna ride the Olympics. I've, I compete in these events that are now Olympic qualifying events and I've done good at them throughout the years. Like I might as well try, you know, and, and it wasn't like the, the, the bigger picture was like, what happens when you win? And it's like, well, you win, then you win, but then what? Like it's, it's what you can do with the medal Wheaties box. for the sport, <laughs> <laughs> let alone, let alone, like, let alone sponsors and, they and have way way in Mexico <laughs> Wheaties. they got like a dialed, like uh, yeah, who would your dream, uh, your dream <laughs> Olympic sponsor for mexico be i don't know probably like 
from Mexico. There's Don, these little Don like Julio. Uh, oh, that'd be sick too. I'm not a big <laughs> drinker, tequila. but <laughs> that'd be sick. Why not? Um, there's these like little Mexican candies called masapan. These uh-huh. like little peanut candies, and then yeah. they sell them like when you're crossing the border. There's kids selling like boxes of them, and I'm super addicted to them. It's like like my my sugar of the for the day. You know, it's so sick. That'd be sick. Uh, I don't know. I have no, no idea. I well, let's get your think. face on one of those. <laughs> you know what I mean? So going back to like helping, like how do you, because I even know that you're like you're designing or you've designed stuff with California skate parks. Yeah. So I, that that started like as, as, as joy, you know, for fun. So I'm riding all these Olympic, qui- Olympic qualifying events or just events in general. And I show up to a course and it's so good, but it could be better. The course could be way better if it was moved here and there, if the transition was better here, or if it was less spaced out or or had a few different features here and there. So that I'm super OCD with little things like that where, oh, this would have worked if it had less coping or more transition here. And so I, it went from drawing sketches on my notebook of the course and retracing my practice runs to perfecting it for the finals. And then... So, hey, I'm going to sit down and try and sketch it up on the computer. And I got on this program called SketchUp. It's like a graph, um, architectural design. And I have the free one. It's like nothing too crazy. But What's I started that called? SketchUp. <laughs> like ketchup. SketchUp. Okay, so it's yeah, SketchUp yeah, yeah, yeah. or you can use Revit. It's a little more advanced. It's it's full on. It's, it's for architectures, you know, or architects. So, but, how do you, so, so, so SketchUp is for architects, but you use it for... You can build whatever you want. Okay, cool. You know, like I, I, I get bored and I start building container homes just for fun, but. Ooh, I'd like to see some of yeah, them. Yeah, can we go back? Yeah, can we? Like- we're, so we're going back to the skate parks right before yeah. we get off task. But um, I just started designing skate parks for fun. Like, oh, this would be, or I had a backyard set up in Tucson and and I had it on paper. Like, man, like when I get enough money to rebuild like a, a, a dream backyard, like this is what it would be. And it was on paper. And then when I started getting good at this program, I, I drew it all up and I sized up the house feet by feet everything dude to the to the angles of the backyard to the to the destroyed fence that we had from the neighbor or the shared wall to our neighbor like everything dude and so that started just becoming like a side hobby on planes you know i I just sat there and designed skate parks designed skate parks and then one thing led to another one day i had a conversation with a homie from california skate parks and he said hey bro i heard you were playing with the sketchup app like let me know if you're if you're down to give some input, like you're one of the top 10 athletes in X Games, like we'd love to have your input. Yeah. I'm like, I'm actually all right on this app. Like it'd be sick to help you guys design or move stuff around. And dude, I was on the one-on-one like Zoom calls, like changing features for X Games, you know? And I was like, damn, this is so crazy. Like, this is so insane. Like I'm not only an athlete for the contest, but I'm also giving my input where it's also like an advantage for me and it's fun for everyone else. It's like, and that's the goal at the end of the day is like, you want everything to work so well that everything just falls into place and everyone has a good time. And it's so hard to please all these different styles of riders. So it's so sick to throw in all these different features, you know, and that's where the where the fun came in for me. And I just sat, I just sit there all the time and it's sick. Designing for absolutely no reason but myself. It's so sick. What's your, like, what, what, what what's your favorite style to design? Like, like, is it all street? Is it? I like a mix. Dirt, is it a mix of everything? I, I've never designed dirt on there just because I, I suck at playing with the, those angles are so different, you know, but um, I've always been a big fan of park riding and street riding. So it's super sick to design a park course that works well for street rounded riders, you know, and so if you can have a little bit of everything, then it shows who's been working on, on different things. You know, most course nowadays are so generic and basic or back and forth. It almost gets boring, you know. I get burnt out sometimes. So yeah. I show up to a course and I wish there was other playful features. Or when there's one dialed playful feature, I just sit on it the whole time and just play on it, you know, every minute of the practice, you know, because it's so different. And so if I can add like a bunch of different features, there's a few hybrid contests that, that are still around that have rails and stair sits and hubbas and quarter pipes and seven foot spines and, and vert walls and, and and box jumps, you know, and that's that's what I that's the generation of riders I looked up to. That's what they were riding, you know, and so to have that a, a little mix of everything, it just shows who who's a well rounded rider, you know, at the end of the day, that's what makes you incredibly talented on a bike, you know. Who 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 were your influences? Dude, the list is I mean, I can give you the craziest list. It goes from who can I start with? Obviously, there's guys like Dave Mira, Ryan Nyquist, who who 
Dave Mira, rest in peace, you know, and Ryan Eichels, who I can still compete against with and such a dream, man. Teammates of mine, Pat Casey, one of my best friends, you know, I, I looked up watching him make it into the pro league at the same age as me, you know, and so it's super sick to see him make it. And I, I probably saw him more than my brothers throughout like a contest season, you know, which is insane. Um, Dennis Henderson, Garrett Reynolds, dude, so many, Gary Young, a bunch of bunch of riders that, that are well-rounded, you know, and yeah. Mike Aitken, you know, who was a, such a well-rounded rider, style, tricks, variety, perfection, everything, you know, and, and then that's just, I don't know, man. I, I can give you a whole list of names, like cool. especially nowadays too, where there's all these new kids up and coming. And man, I'm I'm just a nerd, man. I found out on all these new riders. It's sick. Going back to uh, competing with Ryan Nyquist, like how crazy is that? To, like look up to somebody as a kid, and then, dude, and then get to a point to where you're literally in a competition with your idol. Dude, it's so insane, dude. So insane. So I'm watching him on TV, bro. Watching him get medals, he's got like colored goatee, you know, he's got like the craziest sponsors and stuff, like stuff that doesn't even exist anymore. And he's competing against Dave Mira, one of the best rap riders of all time. And they're going back and back and forth, like battling medals, you know, and that's like the most iconic, you know, generations of the sport, you know, to to competing with him, bro, is insane. Like right. it's a dream come true, man. Like I remember going to like a it was like a open invite dirt event and i was like 14 maybe bro i could barely make it over these jumps and uh i think he saw me struggling he saw me falling a few times and he gave me the some of the best advice i could ever have in my life which is longevity is everything so just go out there and have a good time he's he didn't say it in in a rude way but he said hey you're not here to win today like you can't beat all of us that have, that i've had more experience and more practice you're not strong enough you haven't rode long enough and the jumps are bigger than what you've ever ridden like i suggest you just have a good time and just just do you like don't focus on doing good just have a good time and stay healthy you'll make it into the the pro events eventually but for now just enjoy it and and keep your you know keep it rubber side down you know and that was some of the best advice anyone could give me was just to enjoy it and and really stay healthy for the longevity of it you know and next minute i'm riding one of my first x games in austin and and he's on the rolling with me you know and it's like this is so insane you know and he's like you'll get a medal eventually you know just keep going <laughs> you know and, and guys like Corey bowen the same i met him at like bmx jams you know and i'm i'm such a fan bro and i'm following this dude hit the trail set at the skate park bro and like i don't know man it's like little things that i saw him in magazines and and x games and videos and video parts and everything bro and then for him to acknowledge me as a kid bro it was like it's like you don't you don't you don't have that in everyday sports you don't have that in basketball and soccer you don't just show up to a basketball court and run into lebron james it just doesn't happen man and if no. it does it's for like a charity event or something but Dude, like I got to show up to a skate park jam and some of my favorite riders were there, were there, bro. And they're giving away like merch. And he gave me his gloves, bro. And at the time, they didn't even fit me. He said the same thing as Nyquist. Like, dude, just keep doing you, bro. Keep having a good time. Stay healthy and you'll make it eventually. Bro, next minute, I'm at a dude tour and I'm on, I'm at a final, a dirt final with this dude. And <laughs> yeah, he says, hey, remember I gave you a gloves? Like, your dad has them. Like, I think you can wear them now, bro. Like, you're in a final with me. This is crazy. You That's know? And, so sick. And so it's a dream come true, man. Like, as a kid, it's like, you don't dream about winning. You dream about being able to meet your heroes and dudes that inspire you to be better, you know? And so for that to happen, for me now to be in that position and inspire other kids, man, it's a, like I said, bro, like it's a dream, man. It's crazy. That's so awesome. You said like uh, back then those things don't happen, like talking about Dave Mira, Ryan Nike was kind of days. Like how much has the culture changed or how much do you think it's changed even in like the time of like you being within, within the industry? social media man it's like it's so more accessible to talk to a pro nowadays that's if they write back you know but dude imagine just growing up on magazines and and we did and and you know so like imagine just reading interviews on magazines yeah and these dudes are untouchable you can't even reach them bro and now social media is giving all these kids that outlet to not only like they don't even have to leave their city to shine they just have to blow up on social media to, to get that shine as in before if you didn't show up to a contest on the other side of the world or a jam you weren't you never got recognized or you had to do legit video parts to really get recognized in the industry and so it's changed a lot where it comes from that to now with social media and i think 
dude, like I, I could never write Ryan Nyquist on, on Instagram or Facebook and be like, hey, dude, like I'm a big fan. Like what, what advice do you give me? You know, it was, mm -hmm. I had to show up to a contest as a fan and meet him personally. And but how many kids do you know from your local city got that opportunity? You know, how many kids from a little small town in South America could travel, get a visa, come to the U.S. and watch an X Games in person? Like I never got to watch an X Games in person until you I, competed until I in actually them. competed in one. It, yeah, was, it was just like oh, I was out of the reach. It was in L.A. It was an eight hour drive and there's. There's six of us in my family, like tickets were insanely expensive. It was like, you know, like it just wasn't possible at the time, you know? And so with social media, you have that outlet now to do it. I get kids writing me all the time now. And it's like, man, like this is so sick because I write them back and they get so motivated and they get out and ride and, or I write them, I comment back on, on the love they're sharing to me, man. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's all mutual, man. It's sick. Like you could be 45 years old and, and and just started riding and show up to the skate park and you and I can vibe out because we love the same thing. Yeah. Or you can be seven or eight years old and absolutely love it. And, and, and we're going to be homies. It's so crazy, man. So with BMX and action sports, we have that accessibility of getting able to show up to a skate park and running into Nija or Jamie Beswick on a monster trip or you, your heroes, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I think like action sports has always been very good, especially skateboarding snowboarding whatever it be skiing bmx like there's always been a, a, an outlet to where like the elders will take care of the youngers the grommets per se which i don't think happens in in every sport but like showing up to a skate park you know that you're going to be taken care of by the the local older guys or whatever of course it is. And, and i think that's keeping that generation involved you know especially like a pro now that i get to be a pro and and be an inspiration to kids man it's it's a dream come true because it's a huge responsibility as well because now I have to show up to a skate park or I show up to a skate park now and it's like these are these these kids that just picked up a bike a few weeks ago are the kids that are either going to stay with it or drop it in the next few weeks. Yeah. What can I do to inspire them to to continue because they're the ones that are going to be buying the products that we're promoting. They're the ones that are going to be competing against us and keeping us on our toes and putting pressure on us in the next few years. And so that's the goal as well, to inspire that next generation and keep them involved in the sport. How do you think, going back to what we were talking about earlier, but how do you think like a place like Mexico can do that? With events like Olympics, man, like that was a goal of mine to make it in, not only to be able to win an Olympic medal, but to have the power to say that there is talent, there is Mexican athletes that are killing it. And there is other athletes that deserve to be supported. I thankfully, and I'm very blessed to have the financial support of the of my sponsors that can pay for my travel budget and I can make it to these Olympic qualifier events. But there's so many unknown, talented riders from Mexico that don't have that opportunity. And so the importance of that growing in the country is is I have that responsibility as well, or or that's my goal to to push my sport as big as it can get worldwide worldwide or worldly to to have more support for for that next generation, you know, and for a country like Mexico that's dominated by soccer and baseball, you know, I think it's it's important for guys like me to get out there and, and promote the sport in not only a positive way, but a, a joyful way, you know, where kids can have a good time just doing the basic and, and just writing, you know, and, and remembering why they picked up whatever it is they they enjoy doing, you know, you know, because it's like, I, like, I feel like just building a park that kids can use because how many times do you drive by like a small town or somewhere and there's a sick park and you're like ah but there's no one in there yeah right and mm -hmm. it's like so it's not just building it's about building the culture right and it starts people like yourself and 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 one thing that i've noticed too is with the olympics is is you can't just for say for snowboarding you can't just build a 22 foot half pipe there's literally like what maybe like five olympic size half pipes in the world <clears throat> yeah, probably at any moment, right? Maybe three to five half pipes in the world. And not everyone can ride them. They're so intimidating. 100, you can't. You know so what I mean? Like and, and, <laughs> and then even if you are to get to that level, then you've got to be around one of those five half pipes. That's almost be, impossible. Which is almost impossible. Financially impossible. You go down the line. But also it's like, you know, it's, it's I see here in the US and other towns, you know, it's, 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 America, I think, has done a very good job People like Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk Foundation, people like CA Skate Parks, but just even American culture, I think American culture has done very well of giving kids accessibility to these types of things, yeah. which really aren't in 
I think Mexico in that many years, like how, how many, how many, how many parks would be built in say Mexico? I mean, the country's huge, man. It, de it depends the city, like right? uh, the city where, where my wife's from, where my family's from. Dude, there's probably two skate parks, and then and on it's top, a big city. You and know? then on and top like, of that, there's there's two, and and it, it and maybe, one of them's probably not even that good. You know, right? it's all super destroyed and old and built wrong. You know, so it's like, and then you need something like an organization to put on events for kids to keep them hooked. And you I know? think, and I don't think that really happens it many doesn't places exist. at all. It doesn't exist. No. You know, and it's like, how do we, or you know, how how, how do you know? Because a lit, like, uh, it, it's crazy because I don't know if you guys notice this, but every time I watch, like, even watching the Winter Olympics just happen, it feels like you're watching X Games. It's kind of crazy, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing, and I think that, like, X Games happen every year, and there are all these other different licensing and other events that happen around X Games. But the more and more the Olympics become like the X Games, I think the more and more it's going to grow the skate culture or the BMX culture or the snowboard or whatever it is because governments are going to start putting in more money. It's going to be normal. It's going to be normal. You think of all the sports that are, if they weren't in the Olympics, they'd be dying sports, right? Like 100%. There's so many sports that I don't even, I don't ever see daily. Ever, well, is it true? You know? And I, I, I've been saying this, but I don't even know if it's true. The Olympics to put out a sport in, they need to take a sport, take out. A sport out. That's yeah. true, right? I don't know if it's true. I know they do like a trial thing and somehow it makes it, it kind of depends on like, you know, what, point scale is coming you know for snowboarding it was a little easier because we could kind of piggyback off of what you know fis built for ski racing and they had all these rules in place you know yeah so but i, think I guess it, it depends too but it, it's one of those things that gives it that spotlight right and even now it's so cool to think like okay now there's going to be tax dollars going from japan and korea Dude, and, and all these countries park. which are going into these athletes to actually be able to develop themselves you know and yeah and that's what i've noticed throughout like the contest series for before Tokyo was all these all these qualifying events. I had all these friends that I had made from smaller BMX contests in South America that never had a financial support until the federations got fully involved for these qualifiers. Yeah. And it's like, damn, I got a homie that never had financial travel. And now he gets to travel to all these contests because of the federation. Like that's so sick for them, you know? And then yeah. obviously, like you said, in Asia, like I think I saw the number of skate parks getting built was insane, bro. Like to a point where like it's it's so normal now to see like a skate park with resis and foam pits and everything that you need to be the best athlete possible in bmx and skateboarding too like they're fully involved man and i think that's the future i think with our generation of sports i don't i mean i don't i don't really pay attention to the the i don't even know what it's called what's that mainstream sports i think that's like a javelin or a javelin sort of yeah so it's like a, uh, is that a dance move i don't know you know i like there's there's so many what sports. are you letting go of? that's what dingo does in the club all the time if you go with him and, it, and it's not to put any of those that sports is that a whip? down is that a whip <laughs> i'm dancing um and not even to put any of those sports down but i just didn't grow up with with like the the knowledge of those sports so i don't know and like, i think that's was that a huge discus? thing right like was that discus i don't know but i think or what's like the yeah like the shuffling i don't know like, i think you watch a lot of these olympics curling that have been Curl around curling's forever. tight dude but uh, but i never grew <laughs> up watching it you know <laughs> but even that's what i'm saying like when you watch it as a kid you're like all right everything's so similar and there's like these minute like little details right where you're like you don't really see it where as in within like our sports and action sports like you're not competing against a whole team of riders or other it's people one -on -one like your heroes thing, yeah. you're competing against yourself right where it's like if you ride as good as you want to ride and you do well you're pumped right yep and that's yep. where like i think the excitement even in the olympics is watching this because they're seeing things that have never even gone down before ever in the sport or on a bike or on a skateboard and you get to watch it with your parents so these little kids are like watching it you know and they're just like, wow, like I want to do that. And the parents are like, yeah, you should do that. Like, all I got to do is buy you a skateboard. This is great. You Dude, know? and now think about that. So it's like, if I don't really know enough about a lot of the sports in the Olympics or, or, or I don't pay attention enough, now imagine the next generation of kids. I feel like action sports are so common nowadays or more common than, than normal that, that kids like that. Kids like that way more. They're going to be way more interested in the Olympics if those sports are involved. If BMX and skateboarding and snowboarding are fully involved, they're they're going to be way more into the Olympics, which is also great for them. You know, it's a win-win for both. Yeah, especially when so, you've got 17-year-old kids, Chinese kids in China winning the Olympics. 
That's not, I guarantee you, snowboarding in China is going to blow up massive right now. I bet you, you know, and it's, it's again, ha- having the Olympics in Japan and having Japan win Olympic medals. It's like this, this rise it's super of it. important. Yeah. It, 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 and Japan has done a really good job, the same as Brazil, but Japan by building skate parks and now having competitive in both summer and winter, but geez, like they really came out strong in the summer Olympics in their home, in their hometown. And I'm sure that that only then grows more funding from the government, more skate parks built more, kind which of, is the end goal. I think, you know, for sure. It was kind of crazy to see like America kind of get smoked because people didn't see that coming. Yeah. You know, so it's, and I think you're going to see more and more countries kind of invest into, uh, into that going on. So, uh, which is great. Like I, I think I said, it's a great you know? thing. You know, I think it's I think it's a great thing. And, you know, maybe one day, you know, hopefully maybe next year on when the next Olympics, you can compete for Mexico. And then hopefully there's a time to where you see a Mexican kid win BMX Olympics, which Dude. is which is cool. Could be you. That'd be amazing. I think, I mean, <laughs> working for it, you know. Well, if it's, he designs the park, he's going to have a way better <laughs> shot. You know what I mean? it worked out for Pat Casey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did great in his backyard, right? <laughs> yeah, what a place though, right? Pat's house is- Man, like, that was such a sick vibe. I think we've been saying, I've been saying the word way too much is a dream, man. Dream yard, Pat Casey and the whole Casey yeah. family, man, absolutely welcoming for having everyone there, man. And the yard alone is is such a such a treat to ride, dude. Yeah. Seeing him not not only walk into that house when he first got it to visualizing this little ramp to now this monster of a ramp, dude. It's so insane. Yeah. One it's of the best backyards vibe. in the whole world. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Best yeah. One. No, yeah. Shout out to the Casey's for sure. It was like it it, it, it felt like uh that felt like an event like from the nineties. That was that was some cool oh, shit. Oh, so good. It Such was a just good a pool time. Party. No pressure. Dude, I was in the pool most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hot out in Riverside in like what, July or what? It was hot. I remember being in the pool like it was very oh, hot. a little warm up. Oh, I'm jumping in the pool. Sick. It was very hot. Oh, you're riding in 15 minutes. Oh, sick. Let me dry off. Yeah, that's how every <laughs> course should be. Like, hey, I'll be in the pool until you guys need me. Margaritas right? on yeah. me over there in the pool. Pull up. Yeah, like high diving. They always have like a little hot tub right next to their thing. Well, right? I mean, they have a pool. And, well, they're jumping into a big pool and they have a hot tub just to hang out in. Like all we're asking for is a little. They got lots of pools. Yeah, a lot of pools um you design you have a is it a pro model bike with mongoose yeah so i have a pro frame with mongoose that, what's the um, difference that pro frame so you can just the frame so so pro bike would be the whole thing and the frame is actually just the how do i get component. the frame because i'm like I, I actually have a friend in australia that collects collects we have like some old mongooses back in the day fuzzy hole was kind of my guy i looked up dude to. fuzzy Hole's the shit and then i had, had this power this p61 which was I don't know. I think I got it in like 95 or something. But my, my, my best friend who got me into riding BMX still has all my old frames when I was a kid. So I want, I want to buy one of your frames. Yeah, guaranteed. It's out April 5th. So anytime now. It got delayed with all the transportation over to the, to the States. But it's, it's out. You know, it's available. And um, it'll be on, on the website, mongoose, mongoose.com, you know, mongoosebikes.com. Or and that's your, I'll, first, I'll that's your first design bike? So I had a first a first model with them. They were all US made and there was only a handful of them. They were a little more expensive than the normal frames and they were harder to get and a lot of distros and collectors bought those. Uh huh. But I didn't have that much say. I didn't have that much input on it as far as like the specs or the designs or anything. So it was more or less like, hey, we want to put this pro frame out, but we want you to promote it. And, you know, obviously such a, such a blessing to have that. And now the opportunity came back to, hey, that did very well and we only put a handful out. Let's do it again. But we want to have more input. We want, we want you to build something that you're happy with, that people can relate to and ride to and literally buy it and say, this is Kevin's frame. This is what he rides. This is exactly what it what it feels like. And and obviously full creative control over the designs and graphics that, you know, that I got to design with my wife as well. She's a graphic design artist, which is sick. So we worked together as a team on that. And man, and we just perfected this, this, this cool, this cool style frame with a bunch of Arizona graphics on there or stuff that reminds me of home at least, you know, and Mongoose was all about it. They even let me like change their patent front logo for the badge, you know, like everything, man, like full creative control. We're working on video parts and stuff for it. And it's just, it's sick, man. It's such a dream. My dad wrote a Mongoose when he was 12 or 13. And so when I got on the brand in 2013, it was like, it was like a dream come true for him as well, you know, and I got to meet Fuzzy. You mentioned Fuzzy right now. Like I got to meet Fuzzy, like not only riding contests, but judging a contest. And then we actually did a commercial last year together and he like welcomed me into the commercial. Like I felt like he passed the torch to me, you know? And so <laughs> to ride for such an iconic brand like Mongoose from, from the seventies, bro, like they, they, they turn 
motocross and they turned bmx bikes they just mimicked it bro and like motocross to bmx to i mean to 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 mongoose bikes turned into bmx freestyle to, i mean to racing to freestyle to what it is now like yeah they're a huge influence to to what all of us do nowadays man so big shout out to mongoose and everything do you do not only for me but the sport in general man for sure and that logo is legendary oh thanks bro that dude you, you remember the logo everywhere and obviously you see a mongoose like and you think of the brand straight away like i see it in stores now like everywhere bro like i think like in like super uh retailers like resales you know like they're all i saw, saw a shirt like on an expensive website you know where it was on resale for like 300 bucks and i was like i had that shirt a few years ago what the hell like that's crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. kept that one they should have <laughs> kept that one but it's like hey dad you still got that shirt Su super iconic like moto pants from the 80s you know they're like coming back you know and it's like yeah rappers, well, rappers are wearing wear them that stuff you know and it's like <laughs> It's like, damn, that's sick because I'm proud to ride for the brand and I see that and kids are hyped on it and they don't even know the brand until they start wearing it. And so that gets kids involved into riding BMX or just knowing BMX or following it. You know, it's super sick. Sick. Any, uh, any like injuries of late? You good? Nothing crazy, man. Thank God I've been, been, um, keeping it rubber side down, keep doing everything comfortably. And, and I've been very confident, just feeling good, man. I've been, with this incredible strength training and conditioning coach in San Diego, uh, splitting a session with a homie, you know, and and he's just been keeping me on my feet and working around, working around not only the weak points of my body, but preventing those injuries in the long run, you know? And like I said before, I'm such a fan of this sport. I love BMX and I wanna do this as long as I can. I know that when I'm 50, I'm not gonna be able to do everything I'm doing, but the goal is to, to prolong that career, you know? So I've been, putting in a lot of work and a lot of hours weekly to to just prevent those injuries man so thankfully no injuries from now on or from from here on out you know or or what can i say i haven't had any in touch wood that's a scary <laughs> one Knock we, on we, wood, we yeah. always i always tremble when we ask that question to bmxers because you guys take some serious i know you yeah, guys, you guys slam you slam you slam hard yeah it's a risk you know and and i think we accept that you know and the biggest question is like how do you keep going after falling so hard and it's like I think it's that goal. I think that's that step that you have, to, or that line that you have to cross to, it's when you realize like, this is what you want, you know? Like I want this despite those injuries because I know they're gonna happen. I've had them happen before and I've only come back stronger and more addicted to it, you know? And it's it's what, what's kept me riding, man, for the last 20 years, really, it's crazy. Sick. Well, uh, we appreciate you here at Monster Energy. Danny like uh, does these like lightning round things. He works very hard on these, so you gotta like, answer these quick i'm ready are you ready <laughs> you let me know all right um what's the favorite place you've ever traveled for bmx dude i went to south africa i went to cape town that's probably the most insane place i've been to as far as like location wise and then obviously the contest and experience was insane i'd take my whole family there if i could on your 50th birthday what trick do you want to break out probably a 540 on the big setup to fakie or something something crazy we gotta do the 540 at 40 at 40 yeah, okay that's the thing i saw dude thing. i saw a dude the other day literally the other day he's 55 dennis mccoy still riding x games judging and everything he he 360 would like an eight stair bro and he's 55 i yeah, was like wow. hell yeah that's sick so that's sick you so, like riding stairs hey yeah i, so see, like I see a lot of everything yeah. yeah 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 i see you out there from 50 probably flare flip 180 on a quarter pipe be just because it's so wow all now. these kids are gonna watch you roll up to the park be like oh they're gonna be like with damn gray beard. what <laughs> you know and, and it's sick to see guys like dennis mccoy i just mentioned him man he's doing 900s and, and he's 50 plus you know so that's savage um best skate park you've ever rode besides chandler skate park was my local skate park that i grew up in tucson i would say pat casey's dream yard uh gnarliest bmxer of all time <sighs> From my generation, uh, Dennis Anderson. What's your go-to breakfast? Go-to breakfast, acai bowl, homemade. Bang. Oh, Whenever you want, nice. we'll pull up. I got you guys. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the best part about living in California? The best part about living in California, I would say the amount of skate parks that you can ride or choose from and the amount of people you can ride with because everyone's out here, man. The industry's here, so what better place to be than in SoCal? And the weather, man. I can't complain. The weather's insane um go to place to eat in arizona place to eat yeah probably i'm um, vegetarian now but i used to go to this mexican place that my dad my dad's homies used to run probably the best steak tacos um best place to eat i can't even think 
probably El Charo vegan spot. Okay, El Charo. We got to check that out. I think you guys went there for maybe Dirt Shark was out on Tucson. They went there. Um, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm the <laughs> the universe is so big, man. Like in, it's a big universe. Oh, uh, I know. We have. A I believe in God too, so it's a, it's it's like mixed. Uh, okay, he, mixed. He could be an alien. We yeah, you, you think of it as you want. Yet, you know, but maybe we are the aliens. That, that was my problem. other question. I was going to ask you one more. Oh yeah, he got uh, pulling the cod back. So I believe in God. So to answer, do I believe in aliens? I believe in God. So if you want to consider him, whatever you think he is, or or it, you know, I I know that we're here for for a purpose. So we're the world isn't that perfect to to just be a bang you know so that's that's just what i believe in but mm -hmm. aliens I support life you forms, on that. if I support. if you want to be consider them aliens coming angels coming from the sky or god coming down from the sky and like the bible says you know then go ahead call it call it what you want but it's definitely faith for sure i support that i support that that's rap kevin parazzo that's rap legend thanks for coming in <laughs> yeah appreciate, no, I appreciate you, you guys as well man it's see the podcast before so i'm hyped to be on it man it's sick i know long time coming i was gonna say that D danny's a hu huge vest guy um and uh and that's a sick vest so that's oh, thanks. That, that's thanks. fire vest yeah it's a fire vest right thanks there. my homie fire gave fest. this to me he skates he's from chile his sister actually rides bmx her name is maka she rides for monster too so it's sick he's a skateboarder and we traded he wanted something that i had and Hooked it up. So what'd you trade him? Yeah. Some uh You're like, uh two bikes and uh, you're like, this is a sick vest. No, man. we just traded like like homies. It was like he forgot it at my house and then I ended up giving him like a pair of like uh corduroy cargos that they they stopped making. So there you go. That's a good trade. That's, That's a good trade. But I'm hyped on it. Thank you guys and hyped to be here, man. And appreciate you, dude. Thankful for everything that Monster does for action sports in general and everything you guys do to keep the vibes going. Legendary. Thank you, I, dude. No Rock worries. Roll. <laughs> That's a wrap. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy.